Hello, my friend. This is Greg Hennett bringing you more Water from the Rock. Today's message is, Is God's love truly unconditional? A concern has been conceived in my soul and gestating for some time now, and I simply must birth it. It concerns the oft-repeated claim that God's love is unconditional. I beg to differ and to explain the difference. But before doing so, I want to disavow any claim of fully understanding God's love. I can no more explain every level of God's amazing love than I can swim to the bottom of the Marianas Trench and back, holding my breath. Now that's settled. Let me attempt to describe the magnificent, munificent mercies of God. In simplest terms, there are three divisions of God's love. His goodwill, His love for the redeemed, and his love of committed disciples. Let's examine these three loves briefly, but adequately. First of all, God's goodwill. This divine love is directed at every living being, regardless of their beliefs or their behavior. It is universal, unconditional, and unchangeable. It endures because of who God is, because God is love and he is unaffected by the condition of those receiving his love. God's good will yearns for everyone to believe on his Savior, Son, Jesus, and to receive him in the eternal life that is available only through him. It was this unconditional, universal, divine love that sent Jesus to this earth and to the cross to die the death every one of us deserved to die, so that God could offer his marvelously rich salvation to all of us by grace or unmerited divine favor. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, says John chapter 3, verse 16. Peter affirmed this divine goodwill The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, verse 9. From the moment the sinner enters this world until the moment he or she leaves it, God's undying goodwill extends to his lost soul. And God extends this same goodwill every moment toward backslidden Christians and Christ-rejecting Jews. His heartstrings quiver with tender compassion for their sin-hardened hearts to turn back to him from whom they have turned away. When these prodigals repent and return, his compassionate fatherly heart immediately rejoices, receives them, and restores his approval and covenant blessings in their lives. Just as we see in the parable of the prodigal son in Luke 15, 11-32. But every moment they are far from him, they are still near and dear to his amazingly forbearing heart. His goodwill, therefore, is truly unconditional. Now let's talk about God's love for the redeemed. This love is reserved for those who receive the Redeemer and his redemption. When we repent and receive the Savior, we immediately enter the worldwide body of Christ and exit the worldwide body of sinners. Miraculously, we are a new creation, a child of God, and a member of the Redeemer's family. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God, born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Our cooperation with the Redeemer's gracious plan of salvation and our receiving of the divine DNA, that is the very nature of Jesus, delights the Father and therefore enables us to find a special place in his heart. Just as any father loves his own children more than other children, so our Heavenly Father loves born-again believers more than once-born unbelievers. Because we must receive the Redeemer to receive this divine love, it is conditional. It is selective. 
It includes all who receive God's appointed Redeemer and excludes all who refuse Him. In John 14, 6, Jesus gave this definitive statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now let's talk about God's love for committed disciples. This love is reserved for disciples of Christ. All Christ's disciples are Christians, but not all Christians are disciples. Christians are spiritually reborn believers in Jesus Christ. Disciples are Christians who, after being saved, fully commit themselves to faithfully follow Christ. They are irrevocably committed, determined to never turn back. They are not casual Christians. They are more serious about their personal relationship to Jesus than anything else in their lives. They are student followers, or students of Christ's teaching and lifestyle, who understand He expects them to follow Him, to work out His words and ways in their daily living. And, as disciples, they are self-disciplined ones, zealously training their minds and their bodies to habitually practice new spiritual daily disciplines or habits that maximize the growth of their new life in Christ. And, like disciples in Jesus' day, they live for the glory of their Master, to increase His message and His reputation and His ministry and His followers throughout the earth. They also obey the conditions Jesus Himself placed on discipleship. They set their hearts to continue in the study and practice of His Word, learning, living, and sharing it daily, just as Jesus taught in John 8, 31 and 32. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They submissively and humbly bear their crosses of rejection, reproach, and persecution for His sake. They are willing to forsake all that they have, even their family members' approval, if necessary, to follow their Lord in the way of the cross. In short, they are determined to practice loving obedience to everything Christ requires of them. And why? To show their special love for Him and to abide in His special love for them. Jesus' own words establish this. Quote, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. End quote. John 15, verse 9. Now, this text presents us with a parallel and a condition. Christ's love for us parallels His Father's love for Him. So, whatever His Father's love was like during Christ's earthly life, that is what Christ's love is like during our earthly lives. Jesus is plainly telling us He continued in His Father's love, and that therefore we should continue in His love. That is, if we hope to remain specially beloved as His true disciples. And how do we continue in Christ's love? Again, Jesus tells us, If you keep my commandments, you shall abide, or continue, in my love even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide, or continue, in His love. John 15, verse 10. The context here is unquestionably that of God's love, not man's. Jesus speaks of my love, my Father's love. There is also no doubt that this love is not unconditional. We will continue abiding or living in God's love, not automatically, but if we keep Jesus' commandments, that is, His teachings, His guidance, His correction, His calling, and His commissions. There, under the protective covering of Christ's full love, He delights to express His affection by pouring upon us rich inner spiritual blessings, such as His sustained peace, 
insight into His Word, frequent answers to prayer, and comforting, reassuring manifestations of His supernatural, life-giving presence. And if we do not keep Jesus' commandments, well, that consequence also is clear. We cannot abide or continue in His full love, just as Jesus could not have continued abiding in His Father's love if He had refused to obey His orders, specifically to go to the cross. This issue, therefore, is so obvious that even the blindest, most undiscerning Christian can see it clearly, if he wills. Only God's goodwill is truly unconditional. All other degrees of divine love depend on our grace-aided response to God's love. By responding to the gospel, sinners enter into God's love for the redeemed. By responding to Jesus' conditions for discipleship, Christians enter into God's love for committed disciples. Why the distinctions? This is because God cannot love what is contrary to his nature. Since the lost reject his son, he cannot love them, because they are manifesting the nature of Satan, who rejected the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the beginning. And God will never love, or prefer, be pleased with, or delight in anyone who stubbornly continues to think and act like the age-old adversary he abominates and cast out of heaven. To the contrary, he hates all the workers of iniquity, Psalm 3, verse 5. And since carnal, lukewarm Christians, the redeemed by grace, refuse to commit to full discipleship, Christ cannot love the way they are living either. Why? They have refused to walk in the way of His footsteps, the way of full commitment to the will of God. Thus, they are not being conformed to His image, which is His primary purpose in our lives after we receive salvation. Wonderfully kind and gracious as He is, Christ simply cannot delight in the carnal reasoning, worldly values, unspiritual priorities, ungodly habits, narrow selfishness, foolish lusts, blind covetousness, and other blatantly practiced sins of such unchanged, unchristlike carnal Christians. Again, because everything they are and do, all that they aspire to and hold dear, are contrary to his and his father's hearts and ways and purposes. Now, he still holds good will toward them. Oh, yes. He passionately desires that they repent and return to him. Oh, yes. He is eager and ready to receive them the moment they do. Oh, yes. But that is the only sense in which he can love them. His nature makes it impossible for him to prefer or be pleased with or draw satisfaction from or delight in them as long as they willfully choose to live independently of him and to hate what he loves and to love what he hates. So, every day they frustrate, grieve, and disappoint his loving heart just as the carnal Israelites did in the wilderness. Why? Christ gave up everything to die for them and they won't give up anything to live for him. Thus, he loves them with his enduring good will, but not with the delight he holds for committed disciples. So, the next time you hear that God's love is unconditional, remember these biblical truths. They teach us that while his good will is unconditional, his full love, approval, delight, and inner spiritual blessings are not unconditional. They are reserved for redeemed believers who walk in loving obedience to Him. Well, that's all for today, my friend. For more information about my books, courses, teachings, videos, and devotional messages, please visit us at greghennettministries.org. That is G-R-E-G-H-I-N-N-A-N-T, ministries.org. Or at Greg Hennett on Facebook. And may Jesus richly bless you. Maranatha, he comes.